Hi everybody and welcome to Harding Football with Paul Simmons. The nationally ranked Bisons went on the road on Saturday afternoon and got a big victory, 49 to seven over East Central and uh, what was a beautiful afternoon over in Ada, Oklahoma. And boy, your football team came out and, and played well uh, on, on, on Saturday afternoon, Coach Well, Simmons. they did, they came to play. I, I was nervous about it. You know, it was a later start time than normal and we kind of had some, it took us about two hours to get into our hotel the night before and, and it just kind of felt like we had some distractions going on. And I was, I was nervous about how they would come out and, and, and start the game. But, you know, that offensive, the, the first drive was, man, it was so dominant and really got the, the, the things going the right way. And, um, yeah, really proud of them. That was a good win for us. There's so much that goes into road wins. And you talked about, you know, checking into hotels. Uh, people don't always know what goes on as far as your travel on the way out. Maybe a little trouble on a trip here or there. And uh, to, to keep the focus and, and to get a win uh, on the road is so much more than just uh, the 60 minutes on the football field. You know, it is. And I tell you what, as a head coach, boy, you're just, you know, you're paranoid. Are we eating the right thing? Are we getting enough sleep? And what are the distractions? But, but these young men uh, have, have proved to be very, very uh, mature, very resilient. Uh, you know, I really, I look back even to last year, you know, going to the playoffs and the game at Indy and we had the pouring down rain and a terrible locker room and we couldn't find anything to eat. I mean, we had all kinds of distractions. And they're like, coach, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. and, and this was kind of the way it was on this trip. You know, a, a lot of things that I imagined being issues, the guys were like, coach, it's, it's not a big deal. And they, they came out and, and really uh, put my fears to bed. They, they, they uh, took care of business, which I was really proud of. Yeah, no punts in the football game and uh, 40 points. And once again for this football team, and, and uh, the, the first time that, that a team has, has done that in, in five straight road games in three years. Yeah, you know, in the nation, that, that, that speaks to what kind of kids we have. It really does. And, and, and how they travel. Uh, obviously, I don't care who you play. If you can play the entire day without punting, um, that, that's a big deal. You know, uh, a lot of times uh, you, you beat a team and you score a lot of points, but you don't feel very good about how you play. You didn't execute. You had guys that made some plays, but we really executed at a high mm -hmm. level Saturday. I mean, the, the guys, the guy, they were really, really sharp. If we keep on doing that, we're going to have, have a chance to have some some fun days. I told you after the game down the field, uh, second most uh, rushing yards in Bison history, 564 yards, and I think you looked at me like you didn't believe that, but that, that's a lot well, of yards. Well, yeah, it, it didn't fuck that many. I yeah. mean, honestly, I, I thought we had 400 yards rushing, and I thought, I thought that East Central had 500 yards. That's the way it felt. <laughs> you know, our defense has been so dominant that we give a, a, a play or two. You know, Coach Moat and Coach Bigelow and Coach Tribble, they're all having a heart attack. You know, the, um, but they, they, uh, they played after going back and looking at the game on film uh, a little better than we thought. All right, again, the Bison's 49-7 to victory on Saturday afternoon, and we have some good highlights that we're going to look at, starting with first-half highlights right after this. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons, and we're accustomed to seeing the Bisons, if they win the opening coin toss, defer the option of the second half. East Central won uh, the coin toss and deferred the option to the, the second half. So your football team gets the football, Paul Simmons, to, be, to begin the game and uh, got off to a very good start, obviously, uh, here to begin this football game. And uh, on the road, uh, homecoming crowd, it was a great atmosphere over in Ada. It was, you know, they were celebrating the 93 championship mm -hmm. team, which we should have beat that year. Um, but, but yeah, it was a good crowd. And, you know, opening kickoff did not go our way. We got really bad field position and, and, and they had some, some energy and some momentum, but, 
I tell you what, when you when you drive 88 yards and take seven minutes away, and it's just you know brutal in the face, in the face, over and over. Now that, that is a that is really a morale killer. Now, what does that feel like getting eight on first down? Boy, it's huge. In this first play of the game. Know, you know, when you got second and two, there's a lot of plays that are good on second and two. Mm -hmm. You know, you can throw the football down the field. You 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 can roll the dice, and because we you know we're we're pretty good in third and two also. So, um, you know. When, when you have second and less than five, your your chances of winning go way up. O-line was dominant. Cole Chancey was dominant. Preston made really good decisions all day. You know, what really stood out was how many how much of that yards we had on the perimeter, on the edges. And, and actually, the we, we have an offensive player of the week every week. And, and this week, instead of having a guy, it was the receivers as a group. You know, Bobby, Cole Chancey, I mean, Cole Blick. Um, Reggie Knox, Mike Sendrick, Taylor Thompson, I mean, they blocked their brains out. They were dynamite. Cole Chancey's first of his three rushing touchdowns on the afternoon of the Bisons with an early 7-0 advantage. And, and the flip side of that is score early and then the defense come out. And, uh, and this is a very dangerous player here uh, with Benson. You talked about him all week. Yeah, number two is electric. And, and uh, I think it really speaks to how our guys covered that he he tried to bring one out, and then the rest of the night he was fair catching. You know, I didn't. I don't think he enjoyed getting hit. D line played really well. They played really well. Um, you know, they did some things formation wise that kind of, um, you know, gave us some hesitation. But you know, we were in the backfield all night. We, uh, you know, we didn't have as many sacks as I thought we might, but there was constant pressure. Yeah, Devin Comer and T.J. Winslow both come in there on the edge on opposite sides and good coverage and forces the three and out, and you're going to get good field position right here. Yeah. Frank took care of the ball all night, did really well with that, proud of him. I thought, I thought the running backs ran hard. You know, there, there really has been very few situations all year when I'm fussing out a B back or a slot and telling them to get behind their pads and, and finish the run off and, and not run sideways. And, you know, I, I love that about our kids. I mean, they are finishing runs off, which is a big deal in this offense. That last one or two or three yards after contact is a big deal. Malik Matthews, who uh, had a big day, 100, 100 yards rushing. Yeah, Malik, Malik's got a great future. He really does. And, you know, Malik is a guy that has taken full advantage of his opportunity at Harding. I mean, he has been a fantastic student. He works really hard in the classroom. And, and that's a guy that, that has the speed that we need on the edge to, to, make a, to be a big play guy. I'm really, really proud of Malik. Preston Payton had a big first half, 47 yards rushing, and uh, his touchdown right there just a few moments ago. You know, really, besides the, the one fumble, you know, Preston played really well. And, again, he just keeps on getting better and better and better. And you can see it in, you know, you don't see it in his stats as much as you see it in the way our offense is, is performing. The decision-making is everything. And then we get a, a look at a different quarterback here, Ray John, Austin Ramsey. We would see he and David Cornwell uh, taking turns there in the first half. Yeah. Second quarter highlights now as the Bison's 14 nothing with the advantage. You know, they completed a, 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 you know, more passes than we'd like to have seen, but um, you know, the standard has been really high as far as what we've, what we've been giving up. It felt like 500 yards of offense, but it was closer to 200. This was a busted assignment. That was supposed to be an edge blitzer right there. and we got, we got crossways, which is not good at this point in the season, but that should have been a sack. So Mike Gant, yeah. Mike Gant played well. We thought on Tuesday that Mike Gant might have been done. He, he had an injury and, and uh, got an x-ray and we thought he was going to be out, but he, he uh, played and played well. There's the big stop, the big, fourth, yeah, fourth big down stop. Yeah, big fourth down stop. stop. You know, a lot of guys made a big play there. P.J. Winslow was dominant and then Chris Wine making the play there. That was a big time stop. Bison's get it back and I'll tell you a halftime, I'll tell you a stat here when we get to halftime about teams against the Bisons in fourth down and the defense has been outstanding against the fourth down all year. Yeah, fourth down has been, has been good to us this year on both sides of the ball, it really has. I thought this was a, a really nice run by Tristan Tucker. He darted to the left and then a spin move and, and gets the extra yardage there. You know, uh, Tristan is very deceptive. He's stronger than he looks. He's got, he's got really good vision. He just finds ways to stand on his feet. He's, he's sneaky good is what I would say, he's, he's, he's very effective. Great job blocking by Taylor Bissell, great job by Matt Fuller right there. 
Boy, that was a man. That was a great looking play. Great looking run until uh, until it wasn't. So the turnover right there. Bison still up 14 nothing, and boy, Christian Whit bringing some pressure there. But the completion on the screen pass. Yeah, we had a few. Uh, we had a few times where we didn't match up like we should have in our and in, in, we're playing man coverage, and you know you hate to see that, but uh, we sure can rally with our speed now. That's the thing about this defense is. You know, the plays that teams make that should be 40 and 50 yard runs, they end up being a 12 yard run mm -hmm. just because of the pursuit. And, and that really is about a mindset. That's, that's not about a physical skill set. It's about how much you care, how important it is to you. Are you willing to do the extra? I'm, I'm really proud of how we pursued the football all year long, really. And the, the corner of the slot backs, uh, I, I thought were, were super on Saturday afternoon as well. They were. They really were. Proud to see old Preston putting his shoulder down and mm -hmm. finishing the run off. He's really protecting the football right <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, let, you can tell a difference. You know, he, he gave that ball away, and he's, that's what we call double cover. He was double covering. He, he learned his lesson. Oh, Chancey, with those tough yards, do we take for granted uh, too much? Maybe just how tough of a runner Cole Chancey is. Oh, there's is? no doubt. There's no doubt. It's he. He is so. He is so consistently special. We just get used to it, and, and I hope we don't do that because he's 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 rare. Now late here in the Chris second Wine quarter. with a big hit. You know, that, that guy's had a really good year for us. Again, you know, you see the run, but what you don't what you don't see is the great job by the mm -hmm. O line, the great about a slot getting the guys blocked to the ground. We, he went out of bounds trying yeah. to get the, the clock stopped and get one more play run there. There was a play earlier in a few moments ago. We were looking at the defense. You talk about the pursuit, and, and I think Devin Comer uh, really is is maybe uh, you could put him on a poster with pursuit because and relentless. You're right. Uh, they had he almost had the sack, didn't get the sack, and then came up and almost forced a fumble from behind and uh, never stopped. You know that that is the thing that I mean really since before I was a player here that was really the you know the trademark. Mm -hmm. You know at Harding we are going to pursue harder than anybody else, and you, you know you can control that because the, the thing is great pursuit is very is very unnatural. What that means is 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 if I have five of my buddies between me and the ball, mm -hmm. I have to assume those five guys won't get it done. Mm -hmm. And it's my job. I, I've got I've to run as if those five guys are going to miss that tackle. And the truth is, most of the time they won't. Mm -hmm. And when, but when you start believing that and you relax, that is the difference between elite defenses and pretty good defenses. And, and creating that belief, uh, that's, a, that's a big part of the job of, of, of our staff is help those guys believe you have got to run as if you're the only guy out there. And most of the time we do. What about the success on fourth down for this defense? Only uh, two of 16. Opponents only two of 16 on the season on fourth down against your team. And I know you like the third down stat. Uh, your team held East Central at only five of 12. And most of those came there uh, late in the game right. in the second half. Right. You know, I, I, I think the, uh, the fourth down stat probably speaks uh, a lot to, you know, the quality of our D-line, but it also – uh, speaks a lot to to Coach Moat and his decisions on fourth down and and really knowing our opponent mm -hmm. and knowing what to expect. But yeah, you know you got to be really proud of of that stat. You know when it's when you got to have it, mm -hmm. well, what happens? Um, so yeah, proud of that big time. And the time of possession when he went into the locker room, you had to feel good about things. I, I know that obviously uh, no no way that it was in a position where the game was was uh, was in hand. But a 21 to nothing lead, time of possessions uh, was 21 44. Uh, to 8-16 at the half. Well, that, that has been the recipe, you know, keeping the ball out of their hand, defense playing really, really well. You know, it's, it's, a, lot hard, it's a lot easier to play really fast when you're not giving up 8, 9, 12 drive plays. You know, when it's three and out or, you know, five plays and out, uh, man, you can play guys that have great energy. And, um, you know, this, this offense, um, what it does to opponents, what it does to their mindsets, it's difficult. It's difficult. I, I, I would not look forward to defending the Bisons if, if we had to do that. So the Bisons are 21 to nothing lead at the half at East Central. And we'll come back and we'll look at the third and fourth quarter highlights right after this. When 
I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T. Fast. Football with Paul Simmons. Bisons with a 21 to nothing lead at the half in the game on Saturday afternoon at Ada, Oklahoma, as we get ready to look at third quarter highlights. And we talked about the the uh, opportunity for East Central now. They're going to get the football to begin the third quarter. And we see your offense make a staple normally early in the third quarter, but the defense, I thought, they made the staple here yeah. with a quick three well, and out. We, we are so used to getting the ball in, in the beginning of the second half, you know. And, um, so this is definitely a little, little bit different here. Once again, trying to go deep to Benson, covered up there in the secondary. And here is uh, the punt, and your football team is going to get it back. Yeah, I would love to know how many three and outs we've had this year. It, it's a big number. I'm really, really proud of that. Good return right here well, by we're, Frank we're Herbert. We're getting closer and closer to getting old Frank loose. Now, I'm, a little, little more ball security would make me feel better, but he's close. He's getting, getting close. This drive beginning at the 49-yard line with the Bisons up 21 to nothing, and there goes Cole Chancey rumbling into the secondary. Yeah, Cole Chancey is going to leave a big, big mark on the record books. When what he about this here. pass, Coach? I mean, that was right gorgeous on the Gorgeous touch. Yeah, gorgeous touch. You know, Preston throws the ball really well. And he, he throws a very catchable ball, really, really nice touch. Never throws the ball too hard. Does a great job, you know, throwing guys open. Cole Chancey with his... Three rushing touchdowns. That's 24 in his career. It moves him into fifth in career uh, rushing touchdowns at Hardy. Yeah, he's in fifth place, and he, and he is still in his second year. I, mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll take that. We look forward to having that guy around for a while. We're going to have those guys right here for a while. That's more pursuit right there. Chris Wine didn't initially make the tackle, but he got up, and he was uh, in on the play at the end of, end of it. Well, here's a stat for you. There were, they had 19 plays in the game that either went for zero or negative yardage. That's 40% mm -hmm. of their plays. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that is about, that's about preparation, but it's about team speed on defense. And, you know, that's pretty awesome. Well, I love the way Malik carries that ball high and tight. Now, he takes care of it. Nice little cut back there by Good run Matt by Matt, Yeah, taking what they get and getting get north and south. Matt playing on his birthday on Saturday. Yeah, we sang to him in the hotel. <laughs> yeah. Love old Matt. Very proud of him. Bison's up 28 nothing and driving once again right here. And well, this this was the play right after the penalty. You know, we had a penalty, mm -hmm. and so we, you know, we, we, they back us up, and we're kind of – Upset about that, and that was the response. So that was a really good response. Yeah, it was first and goal from the 23. 23-yard yeah. touchdown run there by Malik right. Matthews. Yeah, responding. It, that's what it's all about. How do you respond? Oh, shoot. Had a bust here. Let a guy get loose a little bit. That was one of the biggest plays we'd get up this season. I guess it was a 30-yard play close to that. We, oh, Ben. Big Ben with a sack. Uh, that's my guy. I'm proud of proud of being there, getting yeah. a sack. And I think Ben learned a little bit from his. Uh, you know, he had a celebration that went on a little bit too long last week, so <laughs> he was better this week. <laughs> had to have a little conversation with him. Corey Beatty there with a tackle. He had four tackles on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, proud of Corey. Proud of Corey. You know, Corey is a is a, Corey is a fantastic kicking game guy. I mean, he he's a rocket covering kicks. Bison's up 35 to nothing as we move into this fourth quarter. And East Central deep into Bison territory right here and threatening. Yeah, we, we were, we we're not happy with them getting in the end zone, but I hate, I hate to be greedy. And that's, that's two weeks in a row, though, no touchdown, no points the first three quarters. And uh, the uh, lone touchdown coming very late in the game when 
when your team had had a good lead. So now the Bisons with still, a chance to get back. Still don't like it. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be uh, yeah, I know. put a positive hey, spin hey, on that, Coach. There's old Tony Beckton. <laughs> Tony's a dynamite senior for us. Well, if that guy finds a crease, he'll get loose now. I'll tell you what, it's been, it's been really good for Dakota to mm -hmm. get a lot of good work. And, right. and he's been very effective, very efficient, understanding what to do. Big block there by Taylor Bissell out on the edge. No, he, it's very he, physical. He has been doing a, a dynamite job. This morning I was talking to Coach Underwood, and he was really bragging on the way Taylor's blocked for us this year, and he gets better and better. You know, again, this slot position is a really difficult mm -hmm. position, and, and you can just see the guys as their confidence goes up with their uh, amount of reps and experience, how much better they're getting. And that's a spot where, you know, we lose Matt Fuller, but we, we – have the rest of those guys coming back next year, and, and we have a dynamite freshman group as well. So that, that group has a great future. Cameron Scott banged all of the extra points through this week, only with the one miss all year. Yeah, that team was very efficient. I, I, I think we had the best operation time that we've had all year. Well, that's, you know, from snap to kick, getting that time off, that's a big deal. And the Bison's up 42-7. Now here in the fourth quarter, late in the day in Ada. And getting to play a lot of guys here, and I know that you were excited about that. Yeah, we do. We, we, we love getting a chance. You know, these guys all work so hard, mm -hmm. and, and they deserve to play. You know, saw Javarius, play. Javarius Wood, the sophomore from Commerce, Georgia, on a tackle a few moments right, ago. Right, right. Javarius is a dynamite young man. I thought this was a really good drive by our young guys, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Jesse Honus is, is really a load, isn't he? I mean, very difficult to tackle. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened, Coach. We, you know, we get down here, we got fourth down, and, and we're debating about whether to punt it mm -hmm. or just, and, and uh, you know, Coach Bigelow said, Coach, don't give the ball to Jesse. He'll go score. And I, I didn't <laughs> want him to score. You know, I, we, we had enough points. I didn't, I didn't want to embarrass anybody. But they said, Coach, you know, we'll run the dive, and he'll, you know, he'll get a first down, and we'll get out of here. Well, sure enough. There he goes. He wasn't touched. Yeah, that yeah. was that was not the intent, and I, I apologize to coach, and he was very gracious. But we didn't mean to do that. But you know, it's not Jesse's fault. Right, <laughs> he's playing hard. Right. That was on fourth two, and obviously you you wanted to get a first down right there. The idea was yeah. to get a first down, run the clock out, and go home. It, the idea was not to score that late. I, I I didn't like that. I don't want to do that. But that was my fault. But you know, you can't tell the kid not to play. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. so um, yeah. I love Jesse, dynamite. I tell you, the the uh, slot backs. We we've talked about what a great job and that they've done blocking, and it's it's great to see them get the reward of a big day carrying the football as well. First time in the flex bone era recently that we've seen the Bisons with two slot backs rush for over uh, 100 yards, 100 yards or more. We saw Malik Matthews and Tristan Tucker each uh, do that Saturday. Yeah, you know, a, a, a lot of credit goes to Coach Underwood. You know, Matt Underwood does an, does an awesome job. That's his group. You know, coming into the season, he really had one guy that had any any meaningful snaps in that group, very young group, and, and he has worked his tail off, and, and it shows. Mm -hmm. Those guys have gotten better every single week, and, and that's a young group, but that's a group that has, has played really well for us, very productive, and, and it's a very unselfish group. Really, really proud of those guys. You know, the offensive staff, Coach, uh, Coach Wheaton, Coach Hill, um, Coach Chisholm, you know, um, Kobe Webb, mm -hmm. coaching the receivers. I mean, they, they are obviously they do a fantastic job, and that was evident Saturday. I, I'm really proud of the way our coaches and our young men prepared. You know, you can't tell any difference in the preparation whether we're preparing for uh, the the SAUs and the OBUs and the Hendersons, or whether we're preparing for the teams that that their record says are not very good. Mm -hmm. And and I, I'm I'm proud of I'm proud of that big time. So the Bison's victorious, 49 to seven, with the victory, their seventh win of the season and uh, the final regular season road game last Saturday. Bison's are going to be at home now for the next two weeks, and uh, we'll look at this week's opponent and wrap it up after this. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you, and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? Come yeah, on come in. Brochettes, the sausage. It's 
So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini, and they're the cores that we cut away, not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? <laughs> I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. And uh, well, I tell you, we, we find out uh, the Bison's nationally ranked and uh, with the players of the week coming out and, and uh, Keith Pledger uh, obviously had a tremendous week this past week for, for your football team. Yeah, great to see him honored. We just heard that. And, and that, that is, you know, it's so rare to see an offensive lineman be the uh, the player of the week, but man, it's so deserving. Mm -hmm. It really is so deserving. Uh, I got a really special place in my heart for for those senior old linemen, you know, um, especially those those three guys that have 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 started, you know, so many games for us. You know, Bryce Bray and Heath and Keith and you know, so Austin Jarrett, the senior, has done really really well for us. But you know, those guys have been such an amazing part of our recent success and. And, uh, you know, to see one of them to get a, a conference honor is a big deal. Really proud of those guys. They are, they are tough, loyal, special young men. And now two games left in the regular season. It'll be November when the Bisons uh, take the field at First Security Stadium. And uh, the excitement, I think it just ramps up a, a little bit more every week now for the next two weeks. And uh, at home this week against the Southeastern Oklahoma team that uh, was playing very well and, and is playing well, but uh, coming in with two losses, I would imagine they will probably not come to First Security Stadium in a great mood. You're going to get their best shot on Saturday. Yeah, you know, we, we have got a lot to play for. And, and listen, if you're watching this show, I, I want you to hear this. These seniors, Man, they, they are special. You know, if they get two more wins, they will, they will tie for the most wins by any group ever. Um, we, we, we need you guys to come get behind them. We need you guys to come out here, bring your grill, be at the ball game, pull for these young men. You know, a lot of times, I mean, I don't know if it's deer season or what it is, but we seem to, you know, ha have a little bit uh, fewer fans the last few weeks, man. Come out, pull for these kids. We need you. These these guys, they 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 deserve it. They they have worked their tail off, and and they are they are special. They are special young men. Uh, so I, I am inviting everybody to come out and and pull for these guys in their last two home games. That would mean a lot to us. We talked two weeks ago about the great crowd, the numbers uh, up in, uh, in the stands, but it wasn't just the numbers in the stands. I thought it was a, a crowd that was in on every play uh, of the football game, and, and I know that's very important. And we, 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 you know, we want that. I mean, we, we want the, the fans to be in the game, to be on their feet. Um, you know, if you're going to come and just sit and watch, we still want you to come, but boy, we want you to come and get out of your seat and, and get behind the guys and let, let the guys feel that energy behind them. You know, Southeastern is a very dangerous team. Their defense, I think they lead the league in, in, in several categories, very dangerous, very talented. Uh, they will be a nothing to lose squad and, and, and um, you know, we got a lot to play for. And so this is a, this is a big football game. Uh, for us Saturday. All right, Paul Simmons, always great to be with you. Congratulations on the win last week and look forward to this week's game. Thank you, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. We'll see you at First Security Stadium at 2 o'clock on Saturday.